This video will provide an introduction to limits and show you how to estimate limits numerically using a table. To do this, we'll start with the definition of a limit and then look at what it means. Lastly, we'll look at how to actually find the limit using a table. Here's the definition. The definition of a limit is said to be if f of x approaches arbitrarily close to unique number l as x approaches c from both sides, the limit of f of x as x approaches c is l. The form for writing this will be like this. The limit of f of x as x approaches c, that is the x with the arrow to c, equals l. Well, one of the easiest ways to see this is to look at a graph. So let's look at a graph to figure out what this definition means. Here's a graph of some function f of x. We're going to look at what the graph does as we, as we approach 1 from both sides. We're going to figure out what is the limit of f of x as x approaches 1. So let's look at it. As we approach 1 from the left-hand side, we'll see that the f of x is getting closer and closer to 4. Now notice that f of 1 is not defined, it's an open point. But as we get closer and closer from the left-hand side, it's getting closer and closer to having a y value of 4. The way we'll say that it's approaching 1, or sorry, as we approach 1 from the left equals 4, we'll use this notation. The limit of f of x as x approaches 1 from the left equals 4. The way we show x approaches 1 from the left is with the minus sign next to the 1. Now look, look what happens to the graph as we approach x equals 1 from the right. This will be the blue ray. As we approach 1 from the right, we're also going to see that it converges to where the y value is 4. As we get closer and closer to x equals 1, the y value is getting closer and closer to 4. The way we'll show that the limit of f of x as x approaches 1 from the right will be using the positive. And it also equals 4. Now this is part of the definition. The definition says that as we approach c from both sides, that's what this is showing. As x approaches 1 from the left, and from the right are both sides. We're approaching both sides of 1. Now the other part of the definition up top says it has to be arbitrarily close to a unique number. As we get closer and closer to where this f of x value is, we see that it's converging on 4. 4 is the unique number. As we approach it from both sides, it's converging on a single number and the number has to be defined. It can't be an infinity. Both sides are approaching a y value of 4, so this limit exists. The way we'll show that the limit exists is we'll say that the limit of f of x as x approaches just 1 is 4. If the limit from the right left and the limit to the right are both approaching the same unique number, then the limit exists. Even if f of 1 isn't defined, it doesn't matter. The definition of a limit is just as you approach it from left and right, they both have to be converging on the same unique number. Now let's see what this looks like in a table. Again, before we move on though, take a look at that minus sign and the plus sign. Just keep in mind that tells us what direction we're approaching from. The minus sign would be the left, because that's where your negatives are, and the positive would be to the right, because that's where the positives are on a graph. Alright, so let's look at a table now. How do we do a, table, a limit with a table? Here's the limit I'm being asked to evaluate. We need to find the limit of 2x plus 1 as x approaches 3. In the table, we'll make a table that picks some numbers that get either side of 3. We'll pick numbers that are smaller than 3 and numbers that are bigger than 3. But keeping in mind, the numbers must get closer and closer to 3. So here's my table, x, the 2x plus 1, and notice in the x column I've got my 3. Now I need to pick numbers that are getting closer to closer to 3 from both sides, that is, both numbers bigger and smaller than 3. Now it's usually a good idea to go um, a thousandth away, a hundredth away, a tenth away on either side. So let's start with the numbers that are bigger because it's a little bit easier to see. A thousandth bigger than 3 would be 3.001. Then we could go 3.01 and 3.1. It was a thousandth, a hundredth, a tenth. As we get closer to 3, the numbers are getting tinier and tinier, little differences closer to 3. Now let's go the other way. Let's pick numbers that are smaller than 3. And again, I'm going to pick something that's a thousandth away, a hundredth away, and a tenth away. As we converge closer to 3, the numbers are getting closer and closer to 3. Alright, now I'm going to need to evaluate. I'm going to take all six of these numbers and plug it into 2x plus 1. If I take 2, multiply by 2.9, and add 1, I get 6.8. Now I'll substitute the 2.99 in. 2 times 2.99 and add 1 is going to be 6.98. And I'll do this for the rest of them. Now I see that these three appear to be converging on a single number. What is it? Well, we went from 6.8 to 6.98 to 6.998. 
it appears to be getting closer and closer to 7. Well, let's see what it does from the right-hand side. 2 times 3.001 plus 1 is going to be 7.002. And do it for the others, we'll get this. Notice, as we move closer and closer to 3, the numbers are getting closer and closer to 7. We went from 7.2 to 7.02 to 7.002. It's getting closer and closer to 7. So here's how we write this. The limit of 2x plus 1, as x approaches 3 from the left, will be using this notation. And it's approaching 7. The limit from the right, the three numbers in, red, uh, in blue this time, would be the limit of 2x plus 1, as x approaches 3 to the right, we'll use the positive sign, is also 7. Now because the limit from the left and the limit from the right are approaching the same unique number, 7, the limit exists. And the way we'll show that is simply the limit of 2x plus 1 as x approaches just 3 is 7. Because the limit from the left and the limit from the right are both approaching the same unique number, 7, the limit exists. Again, it's approaching a unique number, it has to be a specific number, and it has to be the same from both sides, 7, and because it's from both sides, the limit is said to exist. Now let's look at some more examples where the tables are already complete, and let's try to figure out what the limits are using this definition. Here we go. Here I've got three sets of tables, and I'm being asked to find the limit from the left, limit to the right, if the limit exists, and then what the value actually would be, f of 5, f of 0, f of 2. Now notice, the limit and that specific value may not always be the same, and that's fine. All right, so let's look at the first table. We're approaching 5 from the left and the right. Let's look at what happens when we approach 5 from the left. Take the first three numbers, the 4.9, the 4.99, and the 4.999. What are we approaching? Well, we went from having f of x being negative 2.9 to negative 2.99 to negative 2.999. It's clearly approaching negative 3. Now, as we approach from the right-hand side, those are the ones on the bottom, from where, f, where x was 5.1, x is 5.01, and x is 5.001, let's look at the f of x values. We went from 3.1 to 3.01 to, sorry, negative 3.1 to negative 3.01 to negative 3.001. Again, it's approaching negative 3. Now, the limit from the left and the limit from the right are approaching the same unique number. Both sides are approaching negative 3, so the limit exists. Now, is f of 5 also going to be negative 3? No, if we look at the table, f of 5 is actually 10. Now, keep in mind, the limit does not actually have to be the f of 5 value. It just has to be the same number that it's approaching from both left side and right side. All right, let's take a look at the next table. Take a look at it. See what the limit would be as x approaches 0 from the left and x approaches 0 from the right. Does the limit exist? Well, as we approach 0 from the left, we go from negative 3.9 to negative 3.99 to negative 3.999. The limit as we approach 0 from the left is going to be negative 4. How about the right side? The right side goes from being 7.9 to 7.99 to 7.999. Here, we're approaching 8. Now, because the limit of f of x as x approaches 0 from the left does not match the limit of f of x as x approaches 0 from the right, the limit does not exist. The limits aren't the same on both sides, so the limit does not exist. Now, a lot of times you're going to see does not exist abbreviated as D-N-E. And it's okay to use. You can use D-N-E. It's a lot easier to write. What about f of 0? Does f of 0 exist? Well, from the table, f of 0 is 8. All right, one more time. Last example here. We've got the limit as x approaches 2. Let's see what happens. From the left-hand side, we're going from being f of x is negative 10 to negative 100 to negative 1,000. What's that approaching? Well, it looks like it's headed towards negative infinity. But negative infinity is not a unique number. It's a destination. So in this case, the limit from the left does not exist. On the right-hand side, we're going from being from 10 to 100 to 1,000. Again, it's unbounded. It's getting bigger and bigger over time. It's not approaching a unique number. So the right side limit does not exist. Which means the overall limit of f of x as x approaches 2 also does not exist. What about f of 2? Does f of 2 exist? 
Well, we're not going to say does not exist. Instead, it's undefined. The limits may not exist, but the value itself there is undefined. This would be an asymptote. Anytime you have these asymptotes, it cannot have a limit at that point. All right, let's look at a couple more examples. Here's three more. Why don't you pause the video, work these ones out, and then resume the video when you're ready to check. I'll give you a moment. All right, hopefully I've had a chance to work it over. In the first one, we're looking at a limit of f of x as x approaches negative 2. Up top, we're going from negative 4.3 to negative 4.13 to negative 4.02. It's approaching negative 4. From the right-hand side, it's going from negative 3.7 to negative 3.87 to negative 3.98. Again, it's approaching negative 4. Both sides are approaching negative 4, even though f of negative 2 is undefined. Because both sides approach the same unique number, the limit exists, even if the specific number, f of negative 2, is undefined. All right, let's look at our next example. We're approaching the limit of f of x as x approaches 10. Well, let's see it. It's going on the left, from the left, 5.264 to 5.253 to 5.2501. It's going to 5.25. From the right, it's going from 102 to 325 point something to 1,000 and something. Here, the right side is unbounded, which means on the right side, the limit does not exist. Because the left side and right side are not approaching the same unique number, the limit of f of x as x approaches 10 is said to not exist even though f of 10 is 5.25. In order for the limit to exist, both sides have to approach the same unique number. All right, the last one. From the left, as we approach 2 from the left, we see that it goes from 14.93 to 14.78 to 14.7503. The limit from the left is approaching 14.75. From the right side, we have negative 14.93 to negative 14.78 to negative 14.75. That's approaching negative 14.75. And positive 14.75 and negative 14.75 are not the same unique number, which means overall the limit of f of x as x approaches 2 does not exist. And the value of f of 2 is 14.75. Now you'll be doing this in the um, activity in just a moment when you do it on, de um, on Delta Math, except you're actually going to have to type in the numbers for the table. Again, I recommend you pick numbers that are a thousandth, a hundredth, a tenth away on either side and see what happens. <coughs> All right, thank you for watching. Hopefully it helps.